Accessing library computer data. And to make sure history never forgets the name Enterprise. Hey everybody, welcome to the Penske Podcast. We are here continuing our Let's Watch Star Trek Next Generation. If you haven't tuned in before, this is a podcast where we're going through all 178 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation and giving our thoughts and uh, feelings about every single one. So at this point, we're up to episode 7 of season 2. It's called Unnatural Selection. This aired way back on January 30th, 30th, 1989. It was directed by Paul Lynch, written by John Mason and Mike Gray. In this one, the episode, uh, this episode is the one where the Enterprise encounters a Starfleet supply ship where everyone has died from rapid aging. They must find the cause before scientists on a research colony suffer the same fate. Uh, Modi Operandis is going to return to talk about this one with us. I'm sure we've got a lot to talk about in uh, Dr. Catherine Pulaski's breakout episode of the second season. So right after this break, we will get to Modi. Captain's Law, Stardate 42494.8. The Enterprise is bound for Star Station India to rendezvous with a Starfleet medical courier. We've been told only that our presence is imperative. Hopefully the mission will give me further opportunities to assess the performance of our new chief medical officer. Hey everybody, we're back. We're back uh, on Natural Selection. So I am sitting here with Modi Apparandus. Modi, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Good, good to have you back. The um, I think we'll make up for... Uh, our previous episode, which is Elementary Dear Data, where I'm not sure I at least didn't have much to say about that one. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I got some stuff to say about this one for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit more to talk about with this one. Um, but I do want to just start off with um, a little bit of a story here. <laughs> story time. Okay. So right. I'm I'm alone uh, this weekend just because my wife is away, and I was watching this one late last night, and. Uh, you know, it's the apartment building's kind of quiet. Everything's quiet. I'm watching this show, and uh, the lights are off. And when they fired that photon torpedo to scuttle the other ship, I nearly shed my pants with how scary that that noise was <laughs> for some reason. Why was that? Why was that noise so sudden? Oh, did you notice that? I was. Uh, I didn't notice it. And I watched it again, and I was prepared for it. And I felt like the sound mix or something when they fired the torpedo at the end is just like absurdly loud compared to everything else that's going on just wow. a, a minor did not talent. notice that <laughs> need to get the sound mixing better so Maybe. this is a um this is a pulaski episode right uh i guess so yeah if you want to call it that it's a pulaski episode for sure it's the first episode that's uh really focused on her as a character um which is strange is in that the episode before this the schizoid man they actively took her out of the story for some reason. Huh. Um, really? Yeah, she's got replaced by that Dr. Salar, the Vulcan, for no particular oh, yeah, yeah, reason. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, so this is a Pulaski show, um, for better or the for Pulaski worse. show. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Don't want to watch that one. There's two things, there's two like major theme things that I thought about this one, or not theme, but sort of like ideas to go along with it. Uh, the first one's the Pulaski episode, which we'll get into. And the second one is that I f- thought that um, for how like a next gen this episode kind of felt, the focus on what they chose to be like the central idea was a very old original series sort of focus or first season Star Trek. Um, sure. This is the this is a next generation episode where there's genetic engineering and it is not the central idea or yeah, conflict that's true that's um, true and i guess i was re- reading it later this is the only next gen episode where uh genetic engineering is legal in starfleet i guess they make it illegal yeah, after this i read that after the fact too yeah which it's is so weird it, it is and it, it makes more sense in terms of the universe of the show um yeah but it felt really tacked on here because you know the fo- right. the focus is on this illness that people are getting in this aging disease and they're being brought into, um, you know, they're in this genetic engineering lab and people are sort of appalled by genetic en- or at least they're surprised by it. But no one is like, this is a bad idea. Maybe you shouldn't be right. doing this. 
Nobody considered that for a fact. Yeah, and they're also, like, shocked that something could go wrong, also. Yes. <laughs> they're, 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 like, no, of course something could go wrong. You're, you're messing with genetics. Like, yeah, you're going to have some mistakes here. Yeah. It's, it's, something's going to happen. That, oh, gosh, this episode. It, it was, it's a bit of a strange <laughs> one. So, I mean, I'm kind of torn about what I think about this one. Um, I don't think it's particularly bad. Uh, no. In that, you know, I thought that the script was pretty pretty strong in general. Um, the payoff kind of makes sense, even though it's techno babble. Um, how yep. they fix the, a lot of techno babble. Problem. Yeah, a lot of babble. And I think the biggest problem was really Pulaski. So we'll save Pulaski for like the big thought about yeah, this one. But it'll um, be a big chunk of this, I'm sure. I wanted to. This is the uh, some minor points that this is the first time O'Brien is given a name. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. I guess so. And we still don't know his first name, which is Miles, but th- we do know that he is O'Brien. And um, he earned his paycheck with the amount of techno battle nonsense he had to Right? Yeah, he did the work, man. I'll give him credit on that. <laughs> He's part of I the... was thinking that I was thinking that he... I'm watching DS9 right now, and he like really improves as an actor. Yep. But like right here, he got put through the paces as far as like the the garbage he had to read as far as the techno babble goes. <laughs> and I watched this one uh, twice. I watched it last night, and you know the first time, when you haven't seen the show in a while, you sort of gloss over the techno babble. You don't really you, you yeah. sort of you get the idea of what they're talking about rather than the specifics, and which is the point of it. I think it is. Yes, yeah, just say enough nonsense quickly enough where people just sort of get the general idea. Uh, and if enough people in the room agree with what the person is saying, then it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And, I, you know, I watched it this morning again in prep for this. And uh, it's it's real. It's just gobbledygook. Like, none of oh, it. I wish I could find his, his, his thing about the transporter and why it's a problem to do what he wants to do. The line, I wish I could yeah. find that right now. And when he's. That when great line. <laughs> when Picard is asking him uh, towards the end, he's like, can you fix it? Patrick Stewart has this look on his <laughs> On his face as O'Brien is explaining what he's going to do. It's just like, this does not make any goddamn sense to me. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, they loved that but, in, the, in the scene. Yeah. Just I, just remembering these things. But yeah, it's a big O'Brien. He gets his first like conference room meeting. He's involved in a conference meeting, which is nice. He gets a name. Uh, he's going to be a recurring character. And, you know, the second scene is in this sort of trying to expand the cast a little bit, like these minor guest stars. Uh, with Dr. Solar in the previous episode and O'Brien in yeah. this one. Um, what you? What was your general con- uh, thoughts about this show? I kind of felt similarly. I don't know if this episode was good or bad. Uh, I don't think I liked it. If I guess I'll go off of that when I do my final score here. Is that how much I liked the episode? I don't. I didn't really like it that much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't expose the Enterprise until I know where this disease came from and how it is transmitted. I realize that, Captain. Naturally, we'll establish a force field containment. But if we lose the force field for any reason, we lose the ship. Force fields can fail, and until... We don't have that kind of time. Now, these children can't survive in the lab once their parents are dead. Look at him, Captain. He's a human being who needs our help. But the risk is... Minimal. If you can demonstrate that he is biologically harmless without risk to the crew, I'll do everything in my power to assist. And, Doctor, God knows I'm not one to discourage input, but I would appreciate it if you'd let me finish my sentences once in a while. <laughs> it's 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 a strange one. The techno babble got me with O'Brien there. The um, I kind of liked the, the pushback Pulaski was giving Picard at first, but then I was annoyed by it a little later. Like, almost like instantaneously it shifted from being like oh she's standing up to him it's like oh she's really really annoying yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's like so he's just gonna ship her off to this transporter uh and uh you know be rid of her probably like i was thinking like in that scene where he's like deciding like oh should i let her go do her things like it's a win-win either she gets killed by the by the virus or you or you you save the day so yeah you know, you, there's no downside here just send her send her up to the, the transport ship you, you, maybe Fine. that's why uh, picard is like i'll take the transporter controls at the end it wasn't just, yeah it wasn't despair to do it yeah. it wasn't despair right. of brian he was trying to sabotage the whole thing to not have her back right it's um <laughs> Yeah, and I thought the no, the, she's fine. Nope, nope, she's not. She's not. I gotta she, send her back into space. She's coming. Where they do the transport thing, where they fade in and out. So like that. That's the yeah. drama of whether it's working or not. I also well, Picard shifts halfway through it, where it seems like he's annoyed by her, but then he finds out that she's a big fan of his, and then he kind of shifts his like attitude towards her altogether here, yeah, just because that, she's a she's interested in him. Yeah, that's true. It um, 
they never really resolve that. They just it is no. just kind of working in the background about them uh, sort of mutually respecting each other, even yeah. though they when they're together disrespect each other constantly. Exactly. Yeah, um, it doesn't resolve the the interpersonal conflict they'll have there still, but right, whatever. And they don't even discuss it really face to face. You know, they just they they act. Well, with, they hug at the end. Oh, that's true. I I thought that hug was uh, it felt wrong to me. It's I don't know. It was it was. It was odd because he didn't. It's, it doesn't seem like Picard's a hugger. No, for I, the most part, it, so it, that it seemed odd. And Pulaski doesn't seem like. I I would have thought like no. an awkward handshake. You know, would have been more <laughs> that, in character. It would have been too comedic though to do that. Probably that's true. Yeah. But it makes more sense for the characters to do that. Hmm. It's uh It's something. The you know, I also thought that the um, the overall tone here was. I didn't think it was bad, but I thought it was really unique. This is the first time. <clears throat> um, They've really shown sort of sorrow at people dying, which I I noticed and was strange. Like when the uh, that whatever that ship is called, the Lantry, when they find Lantry, that, yeah, um, everyone seems genuinely affected by the crew dying, which in previous yeah. episodes has always been treated as sort of like a oh, like a mystery, um, right? And I'm not saying it was bad. I kind of appreciated it, but it, it's a definite change in how they're trying to get the tone of the show and how like crews would react to these things um, yeah they act really more appropriately here probably than they would in previous episodes where they just kind of like are all business about it and right and, the, and interested in the mystery yeah being beat up about an entire ship being destroyed uh would have you know some implications on your psyche as far as your own situation in the world i think right exactly um, so yeah i think i think the writing is definitely improving i'm, I'm kind of with you i don't I wouldn't be like... It's not a bad episode. No, but if the I was... The writing's fairly okay, but... If I was scrolling through it, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'll watch Unnatural Selection. But, like, having watched no. it, I'm just like, yeah, that's... You know, that's... I feel I feel like I'm saying this about every single season two episode that's coming through. It's like, these are good. I probably wouldn't watch them, but they're definitely improving. And the... Uh, I noticed the writing, more than anything, is becoming... You know, the, the acts sort of flow into each other, and the resolution makes sense by the end of it. Um, yeah, it's not like a rush job true. to get to the end of it. Um, yeah, more skilled writing, basically, just crafting a narrative. Yeah. Right, and th- the problems are sort of the uh, character issues that they're not seeming able to fix, or at least they're stuck in this kind of uh, process about what's going on with how these characters would interact with each other. Uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like Data is improving. Uh, Picard is yeah. becoming okay. Uh, so I just had one other, well, yeah, before we get into the, the meat of the thing with Pulaski, um, this had, I, I guess bef- to kick off the Pulaski thing, this episode has one of my sort of pet peeves about season one is now, uh, carrying into season two with this problem that they can't seem to get rid of. It's the fact that the crew sometimes seems like complete idiots in the face of whatever problem is coming around. Um, yeah, the you know the the Chief O'Brien conference scene that we were talking about. Yeah, I know that yep. I know that that I believe that conference scene came after an act break, so they're kind of trying to remind you know after a commercial yeah, remind the audience of what's going on. But they are bringing up things that are so patently ridiculous. Like Troy goes, "Can't we?" Uh, the, so everyone's sick, and Troy's like, "Can't we just beam them over and cure the sickness?" And O'Brien goes. We've already tried that twice and it didn't work. And it's like, <laughs> right. has anyone been paying attention? Gotta catch the audience up here. Yeah. And then Jordy goes, we need to figure out a way to isolate the disease. And Picard goes, yes, but we can't do that. And it's like, we don't know how the disease is, so we can't do that. Right. Exactly. So like recapping the episode. It's, it's yeah, you got to take those TV, like, establishment moments away from it uh, as just a necessary evil, pretty much. You do. But, it, it, seem, it seems ridiculous when you watch them streaming without the act breaks, but it yeah, ties. Yeah, exactly. It ties into the thing of okay so we can sort of get into pulaski here because pulaski acts like a moron through this entire show and i think it it does a huge disservice to the character yeah yeah it's true she doesn't seem like she he's proclaimed to be this brilliant scientist and brilliant medical officer to uh everyone but then at the same time performs like an idiot generally the entire episode until the very end when she's actually talking on the Darwin station and like her life's on the line. That's when she finally pulls it together. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And the, it's just like, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of pushback 
uh, from people on the subreddit and also people who help me do these episodes sometimes, not pushback, but I think people are starting to sort of, I'm starting to get a little bit of feedback about that Pulaski isn't, isn't that bad. Um, okay. And I really disagree with that. And I just want, I want to clarify my position about Pulaski. The okay. Pulaski, Go for it. The Pulaski character is fine in and of itself. Like, if, if you wanted to have this character exist in a show, there's nothing particularly wrong with the character in and of itself. The problem here is that I'm you have to you have to look at this show in and of the universe of its show. You have the next generation, for better or worse, everyone on the crew is sort of a kumbaya thing. It's a common criticism of the show that like people all get along and they all mm-hmm. work together. The the issue here is that Pulaski does not fit that mold. And that's fine if the show was not that tone. The the show is that tone, and sticking her in makes no sense, and therefore it makes her character weird, and it makes it awkward for her to be involved in these other situations with these other crew members. You know, she she just doesn't fit the sensibility of what the show is trying to do, and it's right. it's getting to be awkward at this point because in this episode. She continues her sort of weird fascination with not accepting data when he's o- yeah, when he's only again. being nice to her. And yeah. she's also she claims to respect Picard and that's why she requested to be transferred to the Enterprise. But then doesn't do that at all and, the entire time. No, and even on her first in the child episode, when she beams over, she doesn't report to him. You know, it's like right? wh- you're not you obviously don't respect the captain. And Maybe she's trying to be aloof to try to seem like she's more interesting to him, kind of thing. Yeah, like she, she doesn't want to like just be all the fan fan girl about uh, Picard. She's playing hard. So to she's get. trying to play cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's just I don't. You know, there's nothing wrong with this character. I think she's horribly miscast. Um, I think that's what it comes down to. I think the character, you know, like you say, of you know being against the mold of everyone gets along kind of thing, and somebody that's going to be a little more abrasive and push back is a fine character. But I think the actress's choices here uh make it make it so it's i don't know how to say this but it's more more about that than it is the um i mean like you take like you, we've talked about this before but this is kind of the same model as bones from the original series yep of uh you know mccoy was always kind of uh very very cut and dry and very um very by the book and uh it's like but she's and he would go against the captain when he needed to and that kind of mm-hmm. thing but the acting the acting choices here kind of uh don't do it well enough i think is the idea no she comes um, across as yeah, yeah where bones is always sort of arguing for um the minority in some sense he's always kind of the, yeah. like in in the face of logic of you know if, if you have to kill three people to save one person spock would be in favor of uh, right. or the other way around sorry killing one person yeah. to save three uh, Spock right. would be in favor of doing that to save the three for the you know the whatever that line is for, for and the, McCoy would be the opposite uh, trying yeah, to right McCoy would argue in favor kind of, of saving everybody or not killing one person uh, right Pulaski is they're writing her to try to take that line but it's coming off as more selfish than anything yeah um, <laughs> that's a good that's a good way of putting it yeah she's everyone in this episode is against bringing what is obviously the cause of the disease onto the ship. A terrible idea, basically. Just bring that on the ship right away. And sure, go she ahead, is, Pulaski. She is pro this um, for no particular reason. It's like... Well, she wants to save everyone. Same kind of thing as McCoy, where she would want to save everyone here. But um, it's she's just not like... You have to defer to the captain's judgment. You're putting an entire ship at risk. He's going to do what's best for his ship. Right. She sees that as he doesn't care about people. Right, which is, which is absurd. He don't, he don't care about the same people as much is what basically comes down to is that Picard cares about the ship more than he does some some the Darwin station basically. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's just a it's just such a flawed idea. And her she, you know, she comes, she brings these people on board. She obviously gets sick. It's like she then she <laughs> no goes, surprise there goes back down and figures it out. And uh, I was reading a little bit of follow up stuff here. I, I think it's true. Which is another interesting thing they've done with Pulaski is uh, P- 
Pulaski is either right from the get-go or she never is correct. And she never figures anything out in all of her shows. Um, no. She either knows, really. knows the answer or is completely clueless. And in this one, she doesn't even figure out the answer because uh, the Enterprise does with the transporter business. Yes, yeah, well, they figure out the solution, but she did figure out the cause of it, which was another stupid moment that the, the geneticist at the Darwin station, uh, she just asked questions and they figure out what the problem was. Yeah. Like, they would have done that already. They would have ruled this stuff out, but she's, like, the, the captain or whatever at the Darwin station, the chief officer there, was convinced that it can't be the the crazy abomination genetic people they're making. <laughs> Why? So she's uh, she says that it can't possibly be them because they are they have no immunities or they have they have immunity to everything and like uh then she explains that oh well, they actually send out a uh an external thing that alters the genetics of the disease that's around them. And you like you never put that together that that's what's going on here? I know like, that's come I, on. I thought it, it seemed like that would have been the line where the person's explaining it and then tails off as they realize like, while they're oh, saying it like oh my yeah. god. But <laughs> yeah. what's the advantage? Uh, I see what you're saying, yeah. What's the advantage of creating a, a immunity system that randomly attacks diseases outside of you? Is, right. is there any it would be attacking it would be attacking everything and everyone. Like you can have more than one of those like genetic right. people in the same room with each other because the their antibodies would attack each other yeah they i mean if you had like an operating room you could bring them in they just sterilize the entire room by just yep. standing in yep. there uh, everything would just die then too there was a lot with the genetic stuff i didn't understand. like why make them telepathic that didn't pay off yeah um yeah it doesn't doesn't really like i don't know if they're arguing for like that humans have these capabilities that are drawn out through evolution kind of thing yeah that like yeah. that's what they're trying to go with it maybe i don't know why like why make them look like they're 25 when they're 12 i don't understand when they're 12 years old yeah it doesn't make any sense <laughs> and then they I read in the in the wiki that there was originally supposed to be nude the entire time too oh which really been a different like different conversation too here that's classy yeah and, and they kept yeah. them very um it reminded me very much of species that movie where they they keep yeah. them in sort of like a, a bubble like they're they're right. totally yeah. enslaved to being just genetically engineered, or as the uh, the scientist says, genetically created. Which I didn't understand what the fucking difference was there. Why should we right. say that? Well, yeah, they made a distinction that they were created. Like no, but yeah, you ge that, you genetically engineered them, right, to create them. This is, this is <laughs> not exactly. It's kind of it's kind of uh, apples. Yeah, apples. Uh, apples don't or, just... uh, to tomato tomato is what I'm trying to think of there. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, it's it's just it's interesting. It's um. Yeah, I just, I, I don't think Pulaski, that's my main thing about Pulaski. It's like, I can understand people appreciating her sort of, you know, anti-authority difficultness, which I think yeah. would, would, she'd almost work on Deep Space Nine in terms of that show. Yeah. She doesn't work. But there, she, she wouldn't even fit in there because here it feels like she's going out of her way to be combative about stuff. Yes. Like, it, yeah. it's not even just necessarily standing up for what she believes in. The fact that she goes after Data, like, constantly about every little thing she can, yeah. like, yeah. tells me that she's the kind of person that is going to be looking for a fight rather than just fighting when it's necessary. Right, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I think that's a big flaw. It's not just that she... Because her, her cause here, like we mentioned before, is just wrong. Like, she, she's clearly wrong about what she's trying to do. And she's endangering the ship. She's endangering herself. And it's yeah. just not, it's not written properly to sort of make her actions make sense. She comes across as being dim-witted. Everyone in this show comes across as kind of being a little bit stupid, except for maybe Picard. Yeah. Um, it's just, so does this episode redeem her at all for you? No. No? Well, I, what, let's see. This episode deepens her character, which is always yeah. good for everybody. Um, it does it in a flawed way. And I also was thinking as I was watching it, um, they're changing her to not be that different from Crusher. Yeah, like, True. I could, I, could, I could see this episode being exactly the same if you replaced Pulaski with Crusher. Because as, That's a very good point. As we've yeah. seen in Symbiosis, Crusher occasionally will serve that part of the story where she's like the moral center to something. Mm -hmm. 
and she'll she's willing to also stand up to Picard when necessary. But the difference there is that she isn't established as someone who's going out and looking for a fight, right? And uh, purposely referring to Data as Data right. because she actually <laughs> does say Data in this episode. She says Data in her normal speech, yep. so she would have said Data no matter what. Nobody just switches between Data and Data. <laughs> she's just doing it just to be a dick. She just did it to mess with them. There should be a, a subreddit like animals being jerks. There should just be Pulaski being a jerk. <laughs> Pulaski being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I thought that, you know, in Symbiosis, it was done much better because Crusher actually had a ethical argument to stand on. You know, like, we should right. help these drug addicts. And Picard's stance is that's against the prime directive. We can't do that. Um, yeah. Here, they abandon that. Pulaski is kind of doing that role, but her character is so obnoxious and unnecessarily difficult that it just doesn't it doesn't come across correctly. <laughs> yeah. And plus, in the in the the drug addict symbiosis uh, episode, that I mean, they are victims that she's trying to help, and these people are causes of their own misery. Here. Yes, <laughs> they, yeah. they brought this on themselves by doing their genetic research. So it's it's a little bit different too. That's Picard true. didn't know that at the time. He's just looking forward for the best interest of the ship. But the way it came around, it's like they got what they were come what was coming to them. Yep. Kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, the what the hell's her name? I just. Uh, the doctor on the planet. I can't see her name. I can't find her. But she, she's, she's not. Oh, even it was Kingsley. Kingsley. She's not even particularly likable. You know, no. she, she's, she's like, she's abrasive too. Yeah. She, she and Pulaski like, or like, she like knows about Pulaski. It's like, oh man, we should, you should be here. I wish you were here. Yeah. Like, yeah, you guys should be together. <laughs> you wrote that, that book would go really well. I think you wrote that book about viruses, and which I thought was yeah. interesting. Like, you know, if I was to sort of fix the Pulaski character, I think you could make the argument that. um Maybe she's a better researcher than she is a doctor, you know? Yeah. Like, she'd be... Yeah, she doesn't have any bedside manner kind of thing. Right. Like she's all science. But then she's not all science because she hates data. That's... <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> That's true. She, she said uh, when he scans her or whatever, when she's in the shuttlecraft, and she's like, you're all right. She's oh, like, God. am I perfectly mechanically functioning? It's like, fuck off. I'm operating within acceptable parameters. He's, he's, <laughs> he's just trying to be helpful. He's helping you out. Why are you, you messing out. with him? You could talk to him like a person. Just treat him like a person. You'll go. It'll go easier for you. You'll be more likable to everybody else. <laughs> be, by treating him as inhuman, you see more inhuman yourself, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I, I don't know. And just yeah, it's a it's a strange sort of just a lot <sighs> yeah. going into it. And it was also sort of weird at the end. They tried to uh, they tried to somehow turn it into an evolutionary story, which is why they called the, the they called it the Darwin <sighs> Lab. Yes, and I, didn't I was annoyed by that from the start. I didn't understand that it was called what, the Darwin Lab. What they were talking about when they're like, they're like, we found that humans, that people can evolve because of their environment, and also the other way around. It's like, well, well, okay. What they mean by that, I guess, is that, um, so the evolutionary natural selection thing basically means that the humans would have been able to overtake the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnums, and they, that's how the humans became. The dominant people by able to destroy their predecessors, kind of thing. Yeah. So they created a they created a being that's able to destroy its predecessors, basically. Chief Medical Officer's log. This will be my final report to the Enterprise. Just as changes in evolution are known to be caused by changes in the environment, we now know the process also works in reverse. An attempt to control human evolution has resulted in a new species that's lethal to its predecessors. The children will be condemned to live out their lives in isolation. The quarantine of the Darwin Station must be maintained forever. I guess it's another case of tomato, tomato, because it's like yeah. this is exactly the same thing. You've just you've caused it yourself. Uh, right. It's no yeah, different. This is it's not it's not unnatural selection. It's it is natural selection. You made you got there maybe by genetic means, but it kind of ends up exactly the same way. Yeah, it's, it's, so. it's still unnatural selection. Yeah, I just. I felt like they had come up with the title, and then they're like, and yeah, that's at the, the end. You can, so you can see it. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, I hate when they have a title and they work backwards. Yeah, because they do. They are not concerned with evolution until the last five minutes no. of the show, and then Pulaski is just. Oh, this all will about sound it. really cool. It's a title episode. Yep. For, yeah. Great. Get some Thanks. Darwin out there, and then they, uh, they call it Darwin Station because it's written by writer, so they <laughs> want to have everything fit neatly into a little bundle and have everything not have to think about it at much. And no, it's like, oh, it's an episode about evolution. Let's call the genetic station the Darwin Station. It's. I mean, it kind of makes sense that they would, but it doesn't make sense to me. It's. I mean, it's true. It's. 
It's the fine line between good writing and bad writing. You know, I, I consider it it's a good attempt. It's a little bit too on the nose, uh, kind of. But yeah. at least they're trying to uh, connect the dots. Like, you know, if this was the first season, they would never have mentioned whatever that Florian flu or whatever. You, True. You know, the, if this was the first season, they wouldn't have mentioned that until the very end where the researcher would have been like, you know, one of those guys came uh, from that oh, other yeah. ship and he had a disease. At least in this one, they mention it early and it, it delays the, you know, that's true. it's better scripting to lay the groundwork like that and then have it come back and be like, yeah. oh, that's why we brought it up. It's still, it still doesn't make sense that the genetic researchers wouldn't have thought of something genetic causing the problem here, though. Like, no, that they're, they're, they're terrible scientists. You guys made them, you designed them to change the genetic code of uh, antibodies and, and viruses and then you don't think that's at all a problem for you guys. <sighs> yeah, this episode <laughs> it's yeah i maybe i i saw it a little bit better just because maybe i didn't like the schizoid man as much uh i like this one a little yeah, bit I better did, i didn't watch that one i skipped over it so oh, okay yeah it's um so i mean i i give this one i give it a three out of five uh it's it's certainly not great um, it's certainly not not yeah. terrible um it's definitely hitting that second season uh sweet spot of you know for lack of a better word sweet spot in terms of just like it's settling into itself and it's just a few things that are holding it, it uh, back from really being okay. Yeah. I mean, this the way the TV shows, like big ensemble casts like this, shows go like Lost and that kind of thing, is they do a few like big establishing episodes at the beginning of the season and then they get into like more character-based episodes after that. Yeah. Where it's all just kind of, they can be take them, take them or leave them, they get the staff writing to... Uh, Come come in and do it, and the creators of the show come in to you know do the do the last couple episodes of the finales and that kind of thing. Yes, yep. But um, it only works if you like the characters that it's about. Right. So <laughs> I don't think it works for me. Is the problem? I'm gonna give this one a two. I think on for me personally, I would I would skip it myself even if I was rewatching the series. Yeah, so. that's that, that's uh, I, I can't disagree. I sort of waver between these two for a lot of these, and it really. Uh, the deciding factor, whether it's a two or three, is really just like that sort of personal gut feeling I get after I'm done with it. Um, I'll, I'll give this one a three, I think. So Modi gives it a two. I give it a three. And all uh, everybody who's coming at me about Pulaski, you can step off. You can, you, 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 no, I'm just... Man. Any, anyone's uh, entitled to think, obviously, whatever they like about Pulaski. I just don't... I can't... I can't come up with an argument that would make sense for me as to why this character works on this show. Um, I just don't think she does. With a different actress, it might be better. It, it, it I but. think, I think it's a hundred percent the actress. Um, it's just she's just too, too cold and too weird for what the, uh, for all the sort of, you know, uh, sort of. Oops, excuse me. All the bad actions that this character sort of takes, or selfish actions. You need someone who is eminently likable and uh right sort of affable and things like yeah, that. yeah and that's kind of the difference between this and mccoy is that deforest kelly is ultimately more charming right than she is yes so i don't know <laughs> that's, that's true 100 percent. so uh we won't do any tv critics the general sort of tv criticism was that uh people liked it a lot less than i did i think they were more in line with you <laughs> um tour.com gave it a four out of ten i think AV Club gave it a C minus. Uh, AV Club had big problems with Pulaski and Tor. Just thought that it was a, uh, a sort of too much of a rip off of the original series. And I also I don't think I realized this, but um, McCoy also has a transporter phobia. Just like oh really? Just like That's, Pulaski does. They did way too crib, way too much. Yeah. Yeah. They really just copied. That's and way paste. too much cribbing from the original series. Then <laughs> do something different, guys. Come on. So. That's it for this episode. I appreciate it just for allowing me to uh, use the word scuttle when they blow up the ship. It's, you don't uh, you don't always get to use the word scuttle. Well used, well used. <laughs> and oh, it just I mean, one last thing. I always think it's funny in these shows where you know they come across a uh, starship that's derelict and everyone on it is dead, and um, Pulaski goes, "They died of natural causes." And everyone is more shocked by that than the fact that everyone is ancient and dead on this starship. Right, no. I can clearly see something bad happened here, though. That's not natural. They didn't just, all of a sudden, it wasn't the geriatric uh, starship here just when it the, left. The retirement crew, uh, the land tree, headed off to the oh, retirement God. house. But it's a strange yeah. one. So, yeah, three out of five for me. And uh, not much else to say about this. It's a Pulaski-focused mm -mm. episode that I really think sort of misses the mark even though i feel that the show is developing itself this this one really felt like next generation um in terms of how it 
the plot yeah. sort of mechanized around itself. Um, yeah. Do you have any final thoughts? No, I think this was, like I said, a two, but I think it did in some way, even if I don't like Puklaski anymore here, it did somehow uh, help her a little bit as far as in my mind. I can kind of understand her a little bit better. Yep. I still don't like her, though. No. At the end of the day, I still don't like her. Boo earns. I was saying boo earns. So yep. That's, <laughs> that's it. So you guys can uh, follow Modi on YouTube. I'll put a link to his channel below in the YouTube description. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening. If you enjoy the content and you're listening on YouTube, a like and a comment would be appreciated. If you're on iTunes, a review and a rating, always appreciated. Helping us shoot up right through these rankings. And uh, I will be back with A Matter of Honor, which I remember being good. Uh, it has that awesome scene where Riker kicks the shit out of the Klingon on the, uh, on the enemy <laughs> ship, which is, That's always fun. which is always excellent. So, Modi, thank you again for joining me. Thank you. And I will see you guys next time.